There is a YouTuber, a guitar YouTuber, that I have been keeping my eye on for quite some time. And what I've noticed is that more often than not, the vast majority of their demo videos feature products that were not only provided by the manufacturer, but they're also collecting a demo fee. And from what I can tell, this creator seems to be making 100% of their living doing these demo videos. And that creator is me. I'm the person that I'm talking about. But this video is gonna be a little bit different because it is made possible by the Patreons. Inside this box is a sparkly pink Telecaster shaped object that I bought off of Amazon for I wanna think like, I think it was like 160, 165 after shipping and taxes and fees or whatever else there was. Uh, I think they're advertised on Amazon for, for 149, 150 or something like that. But anyways, what we have here is a Leo James guitar. I've never tried one of these before. I had it pop up on my Amazon feed and it's like, oh, that looks sparkly. Oh, and it's affordable. Let's check this thing out. So I used Patreon funds and I bought this guitar. The manufacturer is not involved at all. It's a completely independent video. If that feels important to you, then feel free to go down into the description and click the link for Patreon and consider supporting this channel on Patreon because I would like to do more of this. I would like to cover more affordable pieces of gear without having to interact with the brand. I mean, I, you know, I am skipping out on getting paid. <laughs> When I do this, I only cover the cost of the instrument or the gear when I do this, but I think it's fun. It's a fun way to give back to the Patreons and say thanks to them. I've been scrolling their names during this intro here. So get down in the comment section and thank a Patreon for making this video possible. All right, let's crack this thing open. We've got ourselves the styrofoam sarcophagus case that has become common. in the import guitar world. They really wanna make sure that their sub $200 guitars are not getting damaged in shipping. And this is the solution, apparently. I'm sure there's a lot of people in the comments section right now who take issue with me making light of doing paid demos. Get over it. <laughs> I do this full time. I have to make a living somehow. And honestly, I spend a great deal of time thinking about the ethics of how I present instruments, as well as, you know, so many of my other fellow guitar YouTubers. We spend a lot of time talking amongst each other about the ethics of what we do and the ethics of how we interact with brands and stuff like that, and how we interact with, uh, with receiving the product and taking payment, charging for our work. It's something that is at the front of our minds for very, very many people in this community. Not everyone, but very, very, very many of us take the ethics of the marketing elements of what we do very seriously. So don't think I'm just making light of stuff here. Although I do think it's funny, you know, when trolls on the internet complain <laughs> about me making a living doing what I do full time. Sorry, I'm not independently wealthy, guys. Oh, I haven't even looked at the front yet. This is this is why I pulled the trigger. The the focus checker on my screen right now. <laughs> it shows these blue dots and lines whenever something is really bright and crisp and has a hard edge on it and it is just lit up for that sparkle finish back there. Wow. All right, let's look at the front. There it is. Kind of love that clear pit guard on here. They didn't have to do a pit guard. They could have mounted direct into the body with that neck pickup, but it's one of the reasons why I wanted to try this out because I've always wanted to experiment with like putting things behind a clear pit guard or like back painting it or something like that. If this is a fun guitar and I like playing it and it sounds good, this might be mod bait. I might be doing things to this guitar. So first impressions, what do we have here? Leo James on this somewhat unique, almost arrow-shaped headstock. It is so close to being an arrow shape. Just a little bit of curve in here and this interesting like three-dimensional carve for the logo there. Interesting shape. What do you guys think of that headstock concept? 
It's pretty unique. Yeah, I know, like it, it is still a six in line headstock with two string trees on it, but there's something about that shape that uh, it, it's grabbing my eye. And I'm not sure if I love it or hate it just yet, but we've got a pretty glossy finish on this maple neck with a maple fretboard, uh, some kind of abalone inlaid dots there. I didn't actually read the specs too much before I ordered this. I saw the sparkly pink <laughs> and the clear pickguard, and then I saw the price and I was like, I'm in, let's do this thing. That's all it takes for me. Let me uh, pull up the specs, make sure I get the uh, nut material correct. It doesn't have the nut material listed. Interesting. A little bit of a loose fit there in the nut slot. There is a gap on one side. Yeah, I don't know for sure what material the nut is made out of. It's, it's not bone. I'm pretty close to positive that it's not a bone nut. It's some sort of synthetic but I can't tell if it's meant to be like a graph tech equivalent or something like that. It doesn't feel like, like one of those cheap pieces of plastic nuts that used to be so prevalent on budget guitars. But let's check out the rest of the guitar now. Let's check out the neck and the fretwork. Uh, it doesn't have those like premium ball in style frets you find on Ertz and other uh, kind of budget import guitars these days, but they seem to be well trimmed and flush with the edge of the neck. Nice little bit of rounding on the edge of the neck as well. The whole thing is very, very, very glossy. Like that is shiny, shiny, shiny. Very, very slick. Doesn't feel, feels smooth. It doesn't feel sticky right now, but that could change once they start sweating. <laughs> I honestly don't mind a gloss neck as long as it's done well. I mean, this seems to be decent. It's not sticky or anything like that. I'm not seeing any irregularities in the finishing. It is just glassy, glassy, glossy smooth, as well as the body. And the finish looks honestly really, really great. Yeah, I'm not seeing any QC issues in the finish at all. Pretty slick, honestly. There is a bit of a gap on either side of the neck. Not really a big deal. I mean, for a sub $200 guitar, how picky are you gonna get? So far, this thing is looking great for the money. It has El Nico 5 printed on the pickups, indicating that these pickups are powered by Alnico 5 magnets. I'm not someone who gets terribly picky about pickup magnets, but maybe it's just because I haven't spent the time comparing. I don't know. I kind of just think in pickup styles, like Telecaster style, Strat style, Humbucker styles, et cetera, et cetera, P90s, Jazzmaster. You know what I mean. I'm taking off the plastics now. Is there a plastic on the pickguard? No, it doesn't seem to be. Three-way switch, I'm assuming volume and tone because why would they reinvent the wheel? Pretty standard flat jack out the side. A cheapish looking piece of bridge hardware here. The saddles the way they are. I'm sure they're totally fine. It's just not the premium looking option that you see sometimes these days. A lot of cheaper guitars will have Wilkinson stuff on them which is always a bit surprising to me. I think it's a way of upselling certain models of guitars at certain price points because it's, you know, bridges really are not that expensive. Like if I wanted to upgrade the bridge on this, it would be like 30, 40 bucks to throw a Wilkinson on here, I'm sure. But if you're producing a $150, $160 guitar, I know that they're not paying 30, 40 bucks, but I'm sure that the expense is still more significant than whatever this is, but it looks like it should be totally functional. I mean, it's a Telecaster. It's like the most mechanically simple guitar <laughs> you can get. It does have string through, if you care about that. Lots of people prefer to string through the back of Telecaster bridges, and this does have that option. 
All right, let's plug it in and see what it sounds like. No issues tuning it up. The tuners felt fairly smooth and firm. They didn't feel sticky or jumpy or anything like that. You know, issues you can encounter on sub $200 guitars. Here, a modern closed back style tuner. This, it doesn't seem like there's any issues there. Unless you have some sort of personal preference for some style of tuner, I don't think there's gonna be any reason to swap these out. I'm gonna have to pull off a little plastic covers on the backs of those. All right, let's check this thing out. I'm in the middle position right now, which is hum canceling, of course. Uh, I am gonna be running through my pedal board down here. I'll call it pedals as I use them. And of course, I'll be running through the two Princeton's rig. <laughs> All right, here we go. First chord. Sounds warm. the bridge pickup. Found the twang. Yep, there it is. There's that twang. Now the neck pickup. Oh, that is dark. That is a dark sounding pickup for a Telecaster neck pickup. I'm, I'm used to neck pickups on Telecaster still having a bit of twang left to them. I'm sure that qualifies as twangy. It's deep and dark and rich sounding though. Smooth even. Back to the middle. Bridge. Yeah, all that Telecaster twang lives on the bridge. Yeah, that dark neck pickup even like fattens up that middle position. Neck position. Now, I, I have my Jennings Navigator out just in case I wanted to make a comparison. So let's compare to the neck pickup on this. This is a guitar that I keep around just because I think it's a really solid example of a classic standard Telecaster sort of sound. So here is the bridge on that. Oh, that might even be way twangier. <laughs> here is the neck pickup. Yeah, that neck pickup is certainly way twangier than the Leo James right here. Yeah, night and day difference between those two pickups. I mean, across the board, the Jennings just sounds way twangier, way more into that classic Telecaster sort of tonal range where this is getting deeper and richer and warmer. You still got twang on that bridge pickup, but not nearly as much twang as that Jenny has on the bridge pickup and the, the, the neck pickup as well. I have a few
feeling that this Telecaster is meant more for like rock and jazz, you know, versus the pure country twangy Bakersfield sound of that Jennings back there. That's actually the perfect riff for this thing. But look at it. Obviously, this thing was designed and put together specifically for jazz, right? <laughs> do that with reverb might as well right start testing out some effects i'm using the source audio true spring reverb for this drippy drippy sound middle that's a lot of reverb and the neck time. I want to check the intonation real quick. Start looking at how this thing is set up. It's playing surprisingly really nice right out of the box. A little bit flat on the low E. A little flat on the low A. Same for the D. And the G. And the high E is spot on, but everything else is drifting just a little bit flat. It's within the realm of normalcy, so I'm not worried about it right now, but I'll probably do some fine tweaking to the intonation on those five strings in my own personal playing time. Let's talk about the neck. It feels really, really fast. to get the impression, and this might be already painfully obvious to everyone else, but with this pretty dang flat and fast neck going on, kind of modern cuts going on on the back, that modern kind of belly cut, and look at this thing here. <laughs> no one actually needs that, but they put that sort of thing on certain types of guitars for certain genres of players. It's got a comfort cut here, which is really nice. I mean, this finish, this is not your classic butterscotch telly throwback to the late 50s Telecaster sort of look here. These darker, more modern sounding pickups, a Telecaster bridge that is more modern in design. It doesn't have the side ashtray thing going on. I'm getting the strong impression that this is meant to be more of a high performance, like aggressive hard rock metal guitar. Let's, uh, let's throw some high gain at it. That's what I want to do. I have stuff on my board, but I want to spend some more time with this guy here. The Cattle and Bread Dirty Little Secret Deluxe. A great, big, filthy secret. I covered this a little while ago, and I haven't had a chance to spend much personal time with it. This will get us some classic Marshall in a box sorts of sounds.
place is a stay. Let's try that on the bridge pickup. Back pickup. I lost it, didn't I? some lighter overdrive now. We jump from clean, clean, clean to just heavy dirt. Here is the left side of my 50-50 pedal for some light overdrive. Probably don't need this camera anymore. Save some digital film. Sounds nice. It's got a growl to it on that middle position. Here's the bridge. And the neck. Yeah, I get the impression that this is meant to be a Telecaster for people who don't want a capital T-E-L-E -E caster. They want a rock machine that happens to be a Telecaster shaped object. That neck pickup just really puts it into this more modern, more aggressive, fuller sounding type of guitar. <laughs> I mean, nothing that a pickup swap wouldn't fix or change, depending if you wanted to fix that at all. That might be the exact sound that you're looking for, is a richer, more aggressively modern sort of sound from something that happens to be a Telecaster shape. some fun now. Might lay down a loop or just stack effects or something. I'm just going to have some fun on my own time and then we'll have some final thoughts and look at this thing as a whole. this coming from? Thank you. 
Oh, it liked that. <laughs> I liked that too. Yeah, that's what it wants. It wants to be creamy. It wants to do modern, high gainy lead type stuff. It doesn't necessarily, it can. It's got some twang on the bridge pickup, but it doesn't necessarily want to be a classic twangy Telecaster. But I gotta say, Great first impressions with this guitar. I'm glad that I bought it. Thank you, Patreons, for funding this video. I bought it almost purely because I saw that finish and I needed to see it in person. I was like, ah, pink sparkle. And they actually have a bunch of other sparkle finishes too. This isn't the only one. They've got like two different greens, uh, a couple different blues, I think. Uh, I can't remember all the different sparkles. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link down below. Go check it out. But for 160 bucks out the door, it's not perfect. Like that nut gap, that's about what I expect to see on sub $200 guitars. That's not a surprise at this price point. But the setup on this out of the box, just great. Super duper laser fast neck. I'm actually gonna like, I'm gonna slop up that neck a little bit and adjust the truss and get a little bit more relief on there just to fit my own personal playing <laughs> preferences. But yeah, it's just, it was set up to shred out of the box. It's got a bit of that kind of like, hyper gloss thing going on, which is a bit funny. I think if they did a matte finish on the back of this neck, it would very much appeal to like the modern rocker shredders that the rest of this seems to be aimed at. Cause that gloss, it does stick to the hand a little bit. It's not sticky, it's, it's a good finish. It feels like a really nice finish. About the same type of like high gloss finish I'd expect to find on guitars in I don't know, let's call it like the 400 to $800 range. Like this would fit right in as far as finishing goes. But yeah, other than that nut gap, I'm not finding any other QC issues. Everything looks really clean. The frets feel really nice. I didn't encounter it buzzing out anywhere across the fretboard while I've been sitting here noodling with it for over an hour now. <laughs> an hour and 20 something minutes is how long I've been recording. Who knows how long the video is going to end up being. The tuners feel fine. They don't feel premium. The shape of the neck is comfortable. It's a very kind of middle of the road C shape sort of thing going on there. Flat fretboard, 14 inch radius. The pickups, I mean, they sound good. They don't sound bad, they just don't sound like hyper Telecaster twangy. They've got this rich, dark thing going on. I keep, I keep using the same adjectives over and over and over again. But if you're afraid, if you want a Telecaster, but you're afraid of the twang, I mean, for 160 bucks, there you go. Let's take a look under the hood. It's really easy to get into Telecaster, so might as well do it, right? Put the camera back on. Editing Ryan's gonna love that. Let's take a look in the control cavity here and see if there's any surprises. Maybe they're hiding all their QC issues right in here. There's nowhere else in a Telecaster to take a peek, especially with this one with the clear pick guard. Where are they going to hide anything? Got mini pots in there, not a huge surprise. They don't seem to be marked on the face. Usually there's a marking underneath right there. They'll tell you how many K they are. I'm expecting 250 on these. I'm not going to dig into it. Uh, relatively budget looking switch there, but it feels fine. It's totally functional. Interesting that there's cloth wiring coming from the pickups. It's like they, uh, they splurged on the pickups or these pickups are, you know, they're just trying to upsell you on little details and stuff like that. And then the rest of it is your pretty standard plastic covered wiring. No big deal there. Standard route, There's a little fuzzy in there, but it has uh, some shielding paint. I don't know, guys. Seems like a much higher quality build than I was expecting. Like, honestly, I was like, oh boy, let's have some fun with a sub $200 guitar. I have to admit, I was hoping just a little bit to have some drama in this video. To be able to be like, oh man, I can't believe it. Here's a, here's a thing, here's a red flag. Here's a reason why you shouldn't buy this, but I don't know. 
for 160 bucks, like, I feel like it's worth it just to get the body, just to get that finish. And then you could build a parts guitar around this if you want, but you don't really need to. Like, it's all there. There's personal preference stuff. You can swap pickups. I'm looking forward to uh, exploring some cosmetic stuff with this, with that clear pit guard. Mounting some fun stuff behind it, maybe back painting it. It'd be neat to get a big piece of kind of like embossed, like paisley wallpaper or gift wrap paper or something like that. Here's a couple color options. I'm thinking purple is obvious. Purples or blues, even like a neon green against that pink. That would be wild or like gold or like silver anodized or something like that. I mean, a lot would look really good on this. There's certain things that wouldn't look good, but there's a lot that would look great against this pink. And that clear pick guard gives me some opportunities to get creative. So what do you guys think? I'll have the link down below. Go check out all the specs. Tell me what you think of this guitar, of the sounds you were hearing, of uh, my report on the playability, of the close-up shots, the various details and stuff like that. And what do you think of this, uh, this video format? Now that you know that, you know, this video's not paid, the Patreons funded me getting the guitar, there's no official connection to the brand or a retailer or anything like that. The link will be an affiliate link because I have an affiliate link uh, program with Amazon. I, I got, you know, I'm going to try to make some money, but this isn't an officially sponsored demo or anything like that. What do you think? You think I uh, did anything different? You think I acted different at all? I don't know. You guys are the one who watch this stuff all the time. It's hard to be self-reflective. I think most of us have trouble seeing who we actually are, who the, how the world sees us. So tell me down below, do you think I did things different just because I wasn't getting paid? I don't feel like I did anything different. I just did my thing. <laughs> so anyways, huge thanks once again to the Patreons for making this content possible. If you wanna see more content like this, might as well check out the link to the Patreon stuff. You could be part of funding the next cool demo video of some cheap guitar that no one was asking for a demo of. All right, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me a nasty comment, support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked, and stay grounded. Bye, everybody.